and welcome to episode 8 of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am Nicole, coming to you from Northern Virginia, where I work and live with my boyfriend and our cat Webster, and this is a video podcast about knitting, crochet, and whatever other crafty stuff I get up to during the week. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, and on Etsy in my shop, NSP Designs, where I make and sell handmade project bags and other fiber accessories, as well as original crochet pattern designs. So that is my entire intro spiel, and I don't think I screwed anything up this time. I did almost have to sneeze, but I didn't sneeze, and that is what counts. I actually have a lot to talk about this week, but not a ton of camera space, so I'm going to try and get through this as quickly as I can without messing things up. I always say that, and then I have to make 13 edits, but it's fine. So, uh, episode 8, here we are. Uh, it has been, I, let's see, I posted my last episode last Thursday. Today is Thursday. Uh, I delayed my normal filming day again. I don't think I've figured out yet a really good day of the week for me to film, um, to feel like it's been long enough since my last video to have stuff to show you, but not be too late that I'm in like a time crunch with editing. Try to figure it out. Thursdays might work. We'll see. I'll probably change it next week. But here we are, and I have a lot to share with you. So I will start with a finished object. And if you have been keeping up with the podcast the whole time, you may have guessed what finished object this is. It is my second finished object of the podcast. The first is my Tecumseh sweater. And this one is my Asana wrap. I mentioned last week that my boyfriend and I were headed out on a little bit of a weekend getaway, uh, vacation, staycation thing, and I wanted to get a lot of knitting done, and I definitely did. This is uh, one of the main things that I worked on while we were there, and it is finished. Here we have my Asana wrap by Amba O'Brien. So I'll show you from one tip to the other. This is the start, goes down here, big section some lace, and then the other end. It does indeed end in more garter stripes. I couldn't remember last week if it did or not. It does. Now, I have to admit something <laughs> that I'm not super proud of, <laughs> but I'm also not... Yeah, no, I'm just not proud of it. Basically, I don't know how this happened because this was fine. This lace section is okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. This lace section is fine. It is what it should be. And I guess I got derailed somewhere in this big garter stitch marathon because this shawl ended up being asymmetrical <laughs> in this lace section. And it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be symmetrical lace. It's supposed to be um, the same amount of lace on this side. There's a center, like a seam. It's not an actual seam, it's like a fake seam. It's supposed to be the same late number of lace repeats on this side as this side. And I super do not have that. There's, however many there's supposed to be over here, there's one and a half more on this side. What's funny is that I didn't notice until I was pretty far into the lace that I had done this because I, cl I clearly what it is is that I either didn't increase enough on one side or I increased too much on the other side. Still not sure which. I think I increased too much on one side because you work increases every so often in this garter section, so I think that's just what happened. But I increased <laughs> the exact right number of times. I, I increased exactly incorrectly enough to let me do the extra lace repeat and a half, and I didn't notice that I was wrong um, when I started. So I did not notice until I had already put in a full couple of repeats of the entire lace chart. And when I figured it out, I wasn't excited, but I also knew that there was no way I was going to rip back because after putting all that work in, and I'm not a lace knitting person, I'm just not. There are people who can lit, knit uh, an all over lace sweater or just incredible, like really detailed, intricate lace work the whole time. I can't do that. I can take a lace panel and that's it. Um, so I knew that I didn't have the patience to rip it all the way back and start over, and I wasn't gonna. So, <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know how this happened. I really don't. I am mystified at myself. I figured it out so that I basically, I, I fixed myself so that I would be to the correct number of stitches here. Um, I worked a couple of extra decreases. Uh, so I worked enough. I worked a couple in the lace pattern and then that was throwing me off too much. So I just left alone and I worked the rest of my decreases. I just did extra rows of this garter section bit um, until I was at the right number of stitches that you're supposed to be at to actually finish the pattern. Uh, and I don't mind that it's asymmetrical, honestly. Um, I knit shawls, but I don't wear them as like a traditional shawl shawl. This, I mean, this is a wrap, but I don't wear them like spread out over my back. I basically wear them like this, um, like knotted up around my neck, arranged in various ways, etc. So first of all, it's going to be bunched up a lot of the time anyway, like this. So no one's going to notice it that way. Had a sneezing fit, had to cut, I'm back. So, first point is, I wear my shawls that I knit like this anyway. Secondly, unless you know the pattern really well, like, unless you are Amba O'Brien, or you just know the pattern really well, no one is gonna, like, look at this and know that I screwed that lace up. So, I don't really care. Um, it's still blocked out really nicely, and I'm really proud of it. And I still love it. I think it's beautiful. There are plenty of shawl patterns that are meant to be symmetrical, asymmetrical. So I genuinely, when I first saw that I did that, I was irritated and mystified, but it worked out. It was easy enough to disguise and work around, and I don't care. I'm really proud of my finished object. It's beautiful. I love these colors. It's so, it blocked out so nice and squishy. Um, the yarn is Hedgehog Fiber Sock in Monarch and Fool's Gold, and the Plucky Knitter Primo Fingering in Do It For Johnny. And it's just, it's squishy and soft, and it's going to be so nice in the fall and on our cruise to Alaska that we're taking in uh, September, and I really love it. You know, mistakes, but I don't care. I think it's beautiful, and it's finally done. That finish gave me a little bit of a case of cast on itis, which I'll get to in a second, but uh, before that, I will give a quick update on the other project that I worked on a lot over the weekend. Um in Williamsburg, which is my spotlight sweater, a color work, a bottom-up color work sweater by Tin Can Knits. I worked on my Asana wrap mostly while we were hanging out, um, sitting on the couch, watching Netflix, stuff like that, and in the car when we were driving places or when we were actually traveling from here to Williamsburg and back. Um, I worked on this because it's just, I'm on plain stockinette, and because we had Webster in the car with us, he was in a carrier, but he was there, um, and he was kind of anxious. I just thought it would be easier for me to be knitting on something that I didn't have to concentrate on. So I chose this as my car knitting. Last week, I think I had just finished the short rows um, and was a little bit past them. And now I am, I think, about halfway up the body. I've gotten this much done. So I think I need to do about this much more. And then I can, I will probably try to finagle some way to like put it on at that point. I don't know how you like, can you try on a bottom up sweater before it's done? I mean, I'm sure somebody has, but can you? Is there any point to do? I don't know. I might try and just like see how long it is and if I like it. Um, point is, I got a lot done and I think I'm about halfway through the body. And then when that's done, I can put it all on a cord with the sleeves and finally get to my color work yoke. I did get quite a bit done on the sweater, so I just thought I'd throw it in there real quick, as it's a uh, regular work in progress on the video podcast. Uh, it, the final work in progress that I want to talk about before I talk about new starts is a cross-stitch project. I've talked about it a little bit before, and I've said that I wasn't going to show it until it's finished and gifted, because it is a secret gift for someone who watches the podcast, but I decided that I am going to show it. So, <laughs> um, if you know me personally, and you are watching this video and you think that this might be for you, stop looking until I stop talking about it. Um, so just look away now. And later, if I find out that you did not look away, um, we're going to be fighting. So after all of the knitting that I got done over our little weekend trip, I was feeling some aching in my hands and wrists. I wanted to give them a break from that, so I switched to my cross-stitch project. It is a pattern by Plastic Little Covers. So last time I showed this, I think I only had this stuff done. And then since, since then, I have done these bits. 
I'm trying to be vague, um, and they will, they're almost done. I have a few things to fill in here, and then I have to fill in more down here with this color, and then it will be time to fill in the middle bit, and then I'll be done. It's, because it's this size, it's going pretty quickly, but it's a great project to give my hands and my wrists a break when they're feeling achy from all of the yarn. So, that was my cross-stitch update. You can look back now if you suspect that you are the recipient. No more surprises. And that is all for my regular works in progress that I've been showing kind of so far. I have one new start, and this came after a little bit of a pattern quest that I went on. I have a lot of patterns in my library um, on Ravelry, and I finished my Asana wrap, and I immediately wanted something else to cast on. And I wanted it to be small enough that it was portable, and easy enough that it was going to be good for me to work on. It wasn't going to be too finky. I can't do brioche. I didn't want like a ton of color work or cables or baubles. Um, I wanted another thing that was like the Asana wrap where there was visual interest and it was pretty and there was something that would engage my mind a little bit but wasn't going to take up a ton of brain power and time so I can work on it while I watch TV. Oh. Whew, some children just ran by. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. I put out a call on Instagram to ask for pattern suggestions. I was hoping people would suggest patterns that were already in my library and I started browsing my own library as well, and it put me on a little bit of a cast-on-itis kick. I haven't actually cast on all of these things, but I definitely want to. Um, some And someone actually, one very nice person on Instagram, uh, gifted me a pattern on Ravelry, which I totally was not, like, I wasn't seeking that out. I didn't ask for that or anything. I was completely not expecting it, but I logged into Ravelry, and there it was. Someone had gifted me this pattern, which was super nice. Um, it's a new release by Children. <sighs> It is a new release by Molly Klein Design, and I think it's called By the Sea, or Down to the Sea, or By the Shore, something about oceans. Um, but it is a very pretty pattern. It looks pretty straightforward and nice, but the pattern is designed to do a fade, a little bit of a fade deal, and I thought that it would be perfect for this yarn that was gifted to me by my last, not this round's Fibershare partner, but my previous Fibershare, previous round Fibershare partner. Why can't I speak? Um, her name is Onyx Fiber Arts, or her yarn uh, that she dyes is called Onyx Fiber Arts. She dyed this up for my package because I told her that one of my favorite colors is yellow, and these yarns are gorgeous. They are called, this one is Air Pop, this one is Butter, and this one is called Extra Butter. That's adorable. And I saw that pattern and I thought it would be perfect for this little set. I've been looking for just the right pattern for these yarns for a long time, so I'm excited about that. I don't have enough of this yarn to meet the yard requirement for that pattern, but I do have leftovers from my Asana wrap, which are in the yellow family, and I have some other stuff that I think I could coordinate it with. So I'm not too worried. I'm just excited. So I'll be casting that on in the near future. I also thought that I would cast on a Leaven Tree shawl, which is a pattern that the Chelsea Pearls talked about in one of their recent podcasts. I can't think of the name of the designer right now, but that's a really pretty two-color shawl, and I want to cast that on soonish as well, but I haven't yet. I've resisted. I've cast on one shawl. And that is my new start, and it is the Camp Wilkerson Shawl by Boyland Networks. Boyland Networks is all over everywhere right now. She designed the Tenya that everyone's knitting. She designed the Tecumseh that I just finished that everyone is working on. She designed the Guthrie, which I am obsessed with. But this is, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this one, really. I think it's one of her older patterns, but it is a wrap, again. Uh, it's kind of like an arrow-shaped wrap, and it is four colors. I'll try to insert a color picture of it here. If I remember. Um, but it's beautiful. I did adapt it. It is supposed to be a DK weight wrap, but I am using fingering weight yarn. And uh, be mostly because I have a lot of fingering weight in my stash that I wanted to use up. Um, I did not want to start something that I would have to buy a bunch of new yarn for. And there are like eight or nine hundred projects for that wrap on Ravelry. And if you go on Ravelry, if you're not familiar, if you go on Ravelry to a pattern and you click the projects tab so you can see all the projects that people have done, there's a little search box and you can search, I assume, any word that you want. But I searched fingering to see if 
anyone else had adapted the pattern to fingering weight yarn, and several people had, and there were two people in particular, I don't remember their names because I'm terrible, but they had left really good notes about how they adapted the pattern from a DK weight yarn to fingering, and basically they both changed the needle size, which I took note of. I think the pattern normally calls for a 6, one of them moved down to a 5, and one of them moved down to a 3. Um, I guess it's because of their gauge, so I just split the difference and I'm using fours. And I also don't check gauge unless it's a sweater. <laughs> I, I know that's like a sin, but I'm gonna confess now, I don't check gauge unless it has to like fit a body. I just, I can't be bothered. So I just decided to go with a four. And both of them also said that they basically did extra rows um, to make it kind of end up as the same length as the shawl. One of them also cast on extra stitches to get the width right. The other person said that they just did the normal width and it worked for them. Uh, I cast on the number of stitches that it says to in the pattern and that was fine for me. I like that width and I know that it will also block out widthwise a little bit, so I'm okay with that. So anyway, that's just something that I wanted to mention. If you didn't know, if you're trying to adapt yarn sizes on a pattern or something else, you're looking for, for notes on a pattern that you want to make changes, you want to see if someone else has done it, use that search box in the projects tab on Ravelry because it's really helpful. So now I'll actually show you my project. Of course I am in the middle of a row, but it doesn't really matter because this is my progress. <laughs> I am very, very early stages with this. I think I'm in like the fourth row of, of working on it, but Here's my project bag. This is actually one of the first bags I ever made for my shop. This is one of the, in my first like selection of fabric purchases for my shop, this fabric was one of them. And I kept one for myself. <laughs> These are my old labels that um, I switched to pretty early on. I switched away from these labels. There's nothing wrong with them really. I just like prefer the other kind, but this is one of my old labels. This is one of my first fabrics. And I just get a big kick out of this print because it's like junk food and I love french fries and it just makes me really happy. Um, I'll give you a look at my pins, of course, of course. Hopefully they're not too blurry. I always link my pins in the description of the video for anyone who is interested. And here is my project. So this first, it's a four color shawl. I think I said that already. Um, and the colors I am using, let me just pop them out of the bag. And of course I took all the labels off the yarn because I just can't get my act together. <laughs> the yarn that I am using will be, um, I'm using some Madeline Tosh, some Knit Picks, and some Blue Sky Alpaca? Blue Sky, yes, Blue Sky Alpacas. I am using, um, this gray color is uh, Turn by Madeline Tosh. I'm using Tosh Twist Light and the colorway is Turn. This is souvenir yarn from the first trip that my boyfriend and I took to New York City together. I love Manhattan, it's my favorite place in the world, and the first year that we were dating, Adam took me to uh, New York to see a show, and we stopped by Nitty City in Manhattan. And so this is a souvenir yarn from that trip. I will also be using, the color that will follow that is uh, Compass. This is Knit Picks Hawthorne Kettle, I think it's called Kettle Dyed or Kettle Tonals. I think it's Kettle Dyed in the colorway Compass. It's this beautiful bright yellow. I really like this combination. After that, there are kind of like chevron dart thingies, like a smaller banded stripes. And I will be using this color. It is, I think it's like ivory or beige or natural on Ravelry, but the tag for this yarn doesn't have a name. It just has a number. It's number 110. Um, it's an alpaca silk blend from Blue Sky Alpacas. So this will alternate with the gray color for the arrow stripes. And then I will have a big center panel. I had to put the other yarn down, I just couldn't handle it all. Uh, this is another skein of Twist Light from Madeline Tosh in the colorway Pendleton Red. This is another souvenir yarn from that same trip to New York that we took together a couple years ago. So I'm really excited about this color combination. I really love it. I originally was going to use, instead of the red, I was going to use um, this skein of uh, Knit Picks Hawthorne Kettle, whatever it's called, um, in Delphinium, but then I realized that my Tecumseh was blue and yellow, and my Asana Wrap was blue and yellow, and I need to stop with the blue and yellow. <laughs> it's a color combination that I clearly enjoy very much, but I need to, like, give it a rest and do something else for a change, and red is my absolute favorite color, so it seemed natural. Plus, this was already, um, in a cake, so, like, save myself the work, because I don't have a Swift. And I kind of hate caking yarn from a hank into a cake without a swift, so 
this was done for me. Kind of made the decision pretty easy after that. Um, and I think that's it for works in progress and finishes and new starts. So I'm very excited. I love working on this shawl. It's really simple so far and I think it's going to be a great knit. And I also kind of want to get started on that by the sea, by the shore, seashore, ocean. I'm so sorry. <laughs> shawl pattern that was given to me on Ravelry. So I'll let you know when I start that as well. I wanted to talk a little bit next about stash acquisitions because my FiberShare package arrived over the weekend. Um, FiberShare, I've talked about it before, so I'll just reiterate real quick if you missed it. FiberShare is basically a huge worldwide yarn swap. Signups open every so often and you have a deadline date. You get assigned a partner, you have to send them a package, and then somebody else sends you one. And it's like a little yarn gift box of magic. And my package for this round was waiting for me when we got home from our getaway this weekend. So I'm not going to share everything that was in the package with you because some of it was candy, which I have eaten already. <laughs> but, um, and some of it is just, it would just take too much time. But I will share with you the yarn that was sent to me. This t-shirt was also in the package. I love it a lot. This is like the third time I've worn it already. Uh, I'm a big fan of Friends, and I mentioned that in my profiles. I'm not sure how many of the names will be in frame, but it's the six Friends. I'm very excited about this shirt. And she also sent me some yarn. I think all of this yarn was from her stash, which is completely fine. Um, you're not required to buy yarn for FiberShare. You're only required to send a certain amount of fiber. So if it's from your stash, it's from your stash. If you bought it, you bought it. There's no requirement for that. Um, so she sent me some more, some more Madeline Tosh. This episode is not sponsored by Madeline Tosh, but like, if you want to send me yarn, that's okay. Um, she sent me some Tosh Merino DK in the color Tarte. She sent me one full skein, and then this she said was a leftover from a project of hers, which I thought was, <laughs> I thought it was really cute that she sent me this tiny little squishy cake. Um, and she also sent me the same DK, Tosh Merino DK in Silver Fox. She sent me two skeins of this. And she had a couple of pattern suggestions for me, so I'm going to look into them as well. She also sent me a skein of Woolen Boon in... I guess the color is 1849. Looks like it. It's this really pretty, again, yellow. It's this gorgeous, like, honey pollen yellow color. It's really beautiful. I had put in my little fiber share survey that I wanted to try Woolen Boon because I've been ogling their yarns for the longest time so I was so excited to see this in my package and she also sent me a skein of Hue Loco which is I know has been around for a little bit but I only like I've heard the name around but I've only just started like following them on Instagram and being obsessed with their yarns so this is Phyllis Sock oh this yarn is Boon Skinny it's a single ply fingering weight 100% superwash merino and this one from Hue Loco is Phyllis Sock. It's a 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Fingering, and the colorway is Serenade Me. So I put on my survey that uh, I don't really work with purple much, and she said that this one was just too pretty, so she sent it to me anyway. And that's fine, because this is really pretty, and I'm so glad to have it. Hue, this yarn is so soft. I've been wanting to try Hue Loco yarn for since I, like, discovered, discovered them. And so I was more than happy to see this in my package. I'm totally okay with the fact that it's purple because it's gorgeous. And she sent me a little mini of Hello Stella Fibers, which was another one that I mentioned wanting to try. This is a basic Stella mini. It's an 80-20 superwash nylon, and it's just labeled as... I, I think it's supposed to be Oz, but it could also be O2. It's green, so I feel like it's, it's probably Oz, but... Anyway, now I have this really cool mini <laughs> from Hello Stella, so I'm very excited about this one as well. Uh, so those were the yarn acquisitions that I got through my FiberShare package in my t-shirt, of course, which I'm so excited about. I also have a stash, um, it's not a stash acquisition, it is more of a stash reclaim. Uh, I put an Instagram story up about this yesterday, I think, but I recently frogged a finished object of mine. Let me grab the yarn. It's kind of a mess right now because it's still drying, um, but I have this yarn. <laughs> All of this. This is woo, um, Hedgehog Fibers Sock in Typewriter. And years ago, uh, I crocheted this into the Festival Shawl, which is a free, I'm pretty sure that it's free, a free pattern on Ravelry. It is very popular. Um, it's a crochet pattern and it is beautiful. 
don't get me wrong, it is a beautiful pattern. It's addictive. It's very um, potato chippy, as they say, or popcorn-y. And it's a lovely pattern. Um, and I bought, these were my first skeins ever of Hedgehog Fibers. It was right when I was learning about um, the indie, like, yarn outside of a craft store, essentially, when I was learning about indie dyeing and brands like Plucky Knitter and Hedgehog Fibers, and then uh, indie indie dyers like Vullen Vine and, and everybody. Um, and I bought these two skeins for myself because I just loved the black and white and gray speckle of this colorway. And I made myself a festival shawl. The thing is, uh, that time in my life um, was very unhappy for me. And I was going through a lot of hard things, um, kind of all at the same time, that were making me feel very sad and alone and stressed out. And it was just a bad time in my life. Uh, and normally I turn to crafting and crochet and knitting and cross stitch during times like that. And it uplifts me and it's an outlet and it comforts me. And the finished objects that I have from those times remind me that you can overcome them and that you can find comfort when times are tough and they make me feel positive. But this project, when I finished it, just didn't make me feel that way. All it did when I looked at it was remind me of the darkness that I had felt and what I had gone through and bring back some of the bad feelings from that time and the pain that I was going through and so I never wanted to wear it. I I wore it, I finished it, and in the years that have gone by since then, I could probably count on one hand the number of times that I wore it. And that's a shame because it's a beautiful pattern and this yarn is beautiful and it just, that's a shame. So I, but I didn't want to get rid of it because this yarn is special yarn, it's it's a little more costly. It was my first Hedgehog Fibers. It's a colorway I love, and I like the pattern. I also didn't think that the yarn and the pattern went together very well, but that was kind of a lower point um, on my totem pole. But I just thought it was a shame that I wasn't wearing this shawl because of the bad memories that it brought up. And I was also keeping this thing in my life that was reminding me of that bad stuff and just hauling it around with me, and it was serving no purpose. So I decided to take my yarn back. And I'm moved quite far beyond those bad experiences. I'm okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everyone's fine. I'm fine. But um, unraveling it the other day, I finally did it I, like Tuesday, I think. I started to unravel it or Wednesday. Unraveling it was kind of like a cathartic experience. It felt really good. And that's how I knew that frogging it was the right choice. Uh, you want to know some things before you start to frog a project. Um, and I, I looked it up. I kind of had an idea of what I needed to do, but I looked it up just in case before I started to make sure I did everything right so that I did not damage my yarn beyond uh, all reason. Uh, so I unraveled my project. I wrapped the yarn loosely around um, like a book just to keep the strands organized because obviously when you frog yarn, you get that kind of like ramen noodle texture. It's very springy and kind of crinkled up and hard to manage. I finished that. I found contrasting color yarn scraps and I tied one around the top and one around the bottom to keep my hank as organized as I could. And then, I mean, it doesn't look like it's very organized, but I promise, I mean, it'll probably be fine. <laughs> Once that was done, I soaked the yarn in like room temperature water with a little bit of wool soak for about 20 minutes to half an hour to help relax the crinkle and relax the fiber and help them recover a little bit. And then I've just been letting it dry. Um, this, it was a, to, for my festival shawl, I used about a hank and a half of yarn or a skin and a half of yarn. So this was the half. Um, and this is pretty much dry. This one is a full skein and it is still damp. It's still drying. So as soon as I'm done recording, I'm going to go put this back in the sun where I've been letting it dry. Okay. So that is everything fiber related. I got a little bit personal there. I'm sorry if that's not your thing, but it's pretty much too late at this point. <laughs> so thanks for sticking with me. Uh, real quick, I'll just mention, um, reading progress. I am reading. I finished, uh, I am not your perfect Mexican daughter last week. And I am now reading The Children Act by Ian McEwen. Uh, Ian McEwen, if you are familiar with the movie Atonement that came out, I 
guess like a long time ago now. It's been quite a while, I think, since that movie came out. But it had Keira Knightley and James McAvoy. That's one of my favorite movies. He wrote the book. It's also one of my favorite books. I enjoy his writing uh, most of the time. I did read one of his books that I didn't like, but I'm reading this one now. I'm not that far in, but I'm enjoying it so far. And uh, yeah, I would strongly recommend Atonement at least. I'll let you know what I think of this one, but that's my reading progress. Hopefully I'll have more interesting information for you next week about that. And um, yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, I did mention uh, last week that we were going to Williamsburg, Virginia for the weekend, Adam and I, and we did. It was a wonderful time. We stopped by Colonial Williamsburg and had dinner there. That was very cool. I took a little bit of footage while we were walking through Colonial Williamsburg, so if you're interested, I'll try and stick that in at the end of the video. And yeah, it was just a great weekend. We rested a lot. We watched um, the current episodes, new episodes of Arrested Development that are on Netflix and just enjoyed ourselves. And I got a lot of knitting done. It was great. And this weekend, it is actually Adam's birthday, so we will be headed to a Baltimore Orioles game. They are his team. He's a big fan of the Orioles. So we will be heading up to a game this weekend at Camden Yards. I am not so much with the sports, but uh, I, I've... Since we started dating, I've gone to a couple games a year um, at his request, and I actually, I have a great time. It's usually very nice weather. The food at Camden Yards is delicious. There are um, um, libations that you can enjoy during the game. I just sit there and I talk to people and I pay no attention to what's happening in the game, and I have a great day. So I'm excited about that. We're gonna go to the game with some of his family and it should be a good time. We will grab dinner at a restaurant of his choice as well and just have a good uh, you know, weekend birthday. It's always awesome as an adult to have your birthday be on a weekend day because you actually get the full day to enjoy. So that's my whole life update, I think, for the week. Um, I don't have much else for you to share. Thank you so much. If you are a new viewer, I should have said this at the beginning of the video, but if you are a new viewer, thank you for stopping by and sticking around to the end of the video. If you are a return viewer, Thank you so much for coming back. If you enjoyed what you saw here, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel to keep up with me, and I will see you next time. I hope you have a great week. Bye.